You'll remember that when you signed up to be a reading volunteer, you were asked to read and agree to Chapter 1's child safeguarding policy and sign up to a code of conduct. Like all organisations working with young children, we take safeguarding very seriously and believe that this is everyone's responsibility. We're just going to go over the key features of our safeguarding approach to be sure that you are clear what your responsibilities are as a volunteer and what behaviour we expect from Chapter 1 reading volunteers. For more details, please do read our policy and other safeguarding resources, such as keeping children safe in education, that we have in our knowledge base. First, what is safeguarding? Safeguarding is a term that relates to the action taken to promote the welfare of children and protect them from harm. This includes anything that might signal a child has been or is being harmed or that their well-being or welfare could be at risk. The Chapter 1 team is committed to safeguarding and promoting the well-being and welfare of all children. We require all individuals who are involved or associated with us to share this commitment. Safeguarding is everyone's responsibility. During your reading volunteering session, your pupil may share something with you that you might find concerning. In the 2023 to 2024 school year, we had 57 incidences where a child shared something with their reading volunteer which gave them cause for concern and was reported. If this happens to you, we want to make sure you feel prepared and attuned to the signs that something might be wrong and feel confident in what you should do. Above all, please remember the golden rule. If in doubt, report. Please let us know of anything at all that strikes you as worrying as you read with your child, no matter how small or seemingly insignificant. No one person can have a full understanding of what is happening in a child's life. Sometimes a child says something that just feels not quite right to one person, but when reviewed together with other concerns or bits of the jigsaw could be a sign of abuse. If you have a concern, no matter how small, please contact our designated safeguarding lead team as soon as possible by emailing safeguarding at chapter1.org or using the rapid reporting form in our knowledge base. We understand that you might feel upset in the event that a child discloses something that leads you to suspect abuse or maltreatment. Please do remember that your reaction can have an impact on the child you're talking to, so try and do the following. Focus on what the child is saying. Try to avoid thinking about what to do next as they're speaking. Try to make a note of the child's exact words. Don't underestimate the courage that they've shown in talking to you. They have chosen you as someone that they trust. Try to react in a calm and reassuring manner, controlling any shock or making any judgments, and let them know they were right to tell you. I understand it might be difficult to talk about this. You're brave. Show concern and empathy. I'm so sorry that this has happened and I will let the right people know. Let the child control the conversation. Be welcoming and allow the child to speak openly. Do not ask any leading or probing questions to learn more about the details of an incident or if it occurs often. This is the job of the designated school safeguarding officer. Be clear that nothing can be kept confidential. Emphasise that while you won't tell everyone, you will let the right people, those that can help, know. Continue with the Chapter 1 session, if that's possible or relevant. As soon as the session has ended, report your concern immediately to us using the rapid reporting form on our resources page and which was included in the Code of Conduct. We're going to take a moment to ask you to consider a real scenario that occurred for a Chapter 1 volunteer last year. Ava, the child, and Ruth, our volunteer, were reading a story about a big bath which was overflowing with bubbles. At one point in the story, the bubbles spilled onto the floor and made a big mess. Ava told Ruth that this reminded her of a time at home when she was in charge of bathing her baby brother and they made a big mess. She got worried that her dad was going to slap her and so she tidied it up quickly. This didn't feel quite right to Ruth. She did not ask Ava for more information. After her session, she made a note of Ava's words. What questions might this incident spark? Was Ava, who was only six, left to bathe her baby brother alone? 
Does her father harm her physically? Could this be an indication of neglect and or abuse? Should I tell someone about this? What would you do? What did Ruth do? The incident weighed on Ruth's mind. She thought about it for a few days and asked the advice of a friend who was a former teacher who was unsure of what to suggest. After a couple of weeks, it was still bothering Ruth and so she told the Chapter 1 team and shared her notes. Chapter 1's designated safeguarding lead immediately reported this to Ava's school as per our policy. The school was pleased to have the information but concerned that they'd been informed after so much time had elapsed. They reiterated that they would like to know about an incident like this as soon as possible after it occurred. Let's review the way Ruth handled this. She did the right thing by taking notes. She did the right thing by not asking Ava probing questions or making judgments. She ought to have reported this to Chapter 1 immediately. Remember, if in doubt, report it. In any child safeguarding situation, Chapter 1 will address your concerns with the appropriate authorities and will involve you only if necessary. Please do not try to investigate the issue yourself. The best course of action is to gently guide your pupil back to the reading volunteering session and once the session has ended, report your concerns as we've described. Please note too that all reading calls are recorded by our platform. It's important to remember that you're in a position of responsibility as a reading volunteer and that your pupils may regard you as a role model. To protect yourself against any unfounded allegations of inappropriate behaviour, remember the following. You are in a position of responsibility and so should use language carefully and appropriately for this age group. Do not share personal information with pupils, for example, phone number and email address or social media details. While it is fine to ask children questions about their likes and dislikes, do they have a pet, do they have any siblings, what's their favourite animal, do not ask children for their personal information, for example, where they live or their surname. Do not use video during any session or share website links. Do not arrange to meet a child anywhere. Do not offer to send children gifts or money or make promises to them that cannot be fulfilled. Do not interact with children under the influence of alcohol or drugs. If you meet your pupil at school, you should only take photos of children if they have confirmed that the child has a photo release. All reading calls are recorded. Thank you so much for your support to keep children participating in Chapter 1 safe.